The Federal Emergency Management Minister, Minister for Drought and Agriculture as well, David Littleproud, give us an update on where the floods are at, what's happening and has the recovery begun in earnest? Uh, it has and in fact we've already got 540 ADF personnel on the ground deployed uh, out there sweeping the streets and, and helping people clean up. Uh, that'll continue to probably surge up to around 700. We're at the direction of the New South Wales uh, Resilience uh, Services to make sure that we don't overstep the mark and we don't duplicate processes. Uh, so we're ready to, to actually surge more resources when required but there's still an unfolding situation in Moree uh, as that town obviously is now just seeing the water abate, but there's still major flooded warnings in, in some systems. So it's still important while the sun's shining, it's still unsafe to go near this water. Tragically, we were reminded by that only this week when two souls were lost. Uh, so we, we need to treat this seriously. Uh, we need to listen to emergency service, but we're starting that process now, not just with boots on the ground, but the money's starting to... And so what sort of money are we talking about for those watching who have loved ones in affected areas? What sort of support for businesses and families? Yeah. So we started last week and the, and the first piece is about just putting $1,000 per adult, $400 uh, per child into their pocket so that they can just, if they've had inundation, they are eligible for that. That's the initial piece. And then after the Prime Minister and I went down uh, and had a look through CALPA with Pat Conahan and David Gillespie uh, in line, we were able to see that we're, the businesses were the ones that are really uh, taking the brunt of this. So there's now $75,000 grants for farmers uh, and $50,000 for small businesses to simply uh, repair to get back up on their feet. We've also looked at the uh, loan process that we've done with respect to uh, COVID and the job and the removal of JobKeeper. So those businesses that many have come off JobKeeper yeah. previously because things were starting to rebound are now eligible for those loans of up to $5 million over 10 years with 24, uh, year, 24 months of no repayment. Is there recourse for families and businesses who, and I've seen a number of uh, of these reports of families, businesses who think that their insurance is comprehensive, but then they find out it doesn't cover flood. Is there recourse for them? Well, this is the challenge we've got with the insurance industry. In fact, part of the Royal Commission recommendations is around the insurance industry being more transparent. Uh, and, and some are actually doing that. And we saw that up in Queensland in 2011 floods. Uh, some of the insurers up there are now making it very specific that you are covered for flood. So that's, it's in bold writing, so everyone knows. And that's what people need to understand. They need to have transparency. Uh, and the insurance industry needs to provide that, not just uh, for that, but also in terms of how... Uh, should should they, in this case, cut, the, cut people some slack? Well, we'd like to think that they'd show a little bit of humanity uh, and have a social conscience uh, to these people. Uh, people enter into these contracts in good faith uh, and we would expect insurance companies to act in good faith. Obviously, contractual law takes, takes precedent in this country, but we just say to the insurance industry, please, uh, you have an opportunity to, to build your reputation here. The government's copped a bit of flack over its $4 billion emergency response fund that was set up in April 2019 but there's been not a cent spend on mitigation against floods. Why is that? Well, sadly, this is politicisation of a, a program that both sides agreed on. So it's a $4 billion fund. There's $200 million a year set aside. $150 million of that can be used for uh, catastrophic events where there's damage and, and infrastructure that needs to be repaired. And it can only be used, it can only be used once all other programs have been exhausted. So but what's the program on the floods that... Well, I'll get to that. To, in terms of but mitigation. It's uh, Karen, it's important I explain this sure. because this is, this is uh, cheap politics by the Labor Party when they, they themselves voted for this legislation. Before that $150 million of the $200 million can go out, it actually has to... Uh, other programs have to be exhausted. We created a $2 billion uh, bushfire program uh, that we have now nearly exhausted. So that had to be spent before we could go anywhere near the $150. The $50 million for mitigation works, uh, those programs will be announced in the coming weeks. So the money is going out, but we will now look... We will either use the $150... Has it been too slow, though? Like, in the $50 million you said on mitigation, it's been two years where levees could have been built, flood resilience established. Is that wasted time? Well, let me say, we get the, we get the fund up and you've then got to have the governance around it. And so that creates... While the legislation might have passed in 19, it takes some time to get the, get the governance around this to protect Australian taxpayers' money. Uh, and then there's this thing called consultation. You should not have mitigation works determined by a bureaucrat in Canberra. We went to the communities right across the country and said, what is important to you? Uh, and, in fact, obviously, uh, they came back. And this one is around flood mitigation. And we'll look to the, to 
the next year in terms of that 50 million, that may go into flood mitigation again because we've done the legwork now to make sure we have an understanding of the mitigation work that's required. And we'll probably complement that even with further funding as a result of the Royal Commission uh, to our response to that around flood mitigation. But at the moment, in terms of flood mitigation, all we've got is a fund. The, well, a fund within a fund. The, the, the 50 million isn't necessarily just for flood mitigation. The 50 of the of the 200 million, the 50 million of that is not necessarily just for flood mitigation. It is for any resilience mitigation works for any natural disaster. But flood mitigation is one that, that can be used quite easily. If we, we may use the 150, we may create another significant fund uh, outside this ERF. Uh, that we may use in the rebuilding of these communities. So we'll exhaust that before we go to the 150 million. We, we spent more than 150 million in one electorate alone. In Eden Monaro, there was over $200 million spent. Uh, so to say that the federal government hasn't been out there and cut the cheque for these people uh, is cheap politics. And, th and this shouldn't be about politics. This, this should be about people. And we just say to the opposition, you actually either you didn't read the legislation that you supported or you're just playing cheap politics. We should be above that. You mentioned the JobKeeper issue on that. Are you worried it might be too early to withdraw it for some industries? No, I think we've continued to be targeted around our response to this and I think the, the Treasury Secretary was quite clear uh, that it was time for us to transition the economy. I mean, we're back to over 90% of the jobs that we lost from COVID are now back in the economy and I think the economy's on a trajectory uh, whereby we have to take some of the supports out so it can continue to, to evolve as we come out of COVID-19. I think this is a responsible thing and I think we've been targeted in our responses and, and been industry specific in that. And I think that's, that's the agility that we've shown as a government. Uh, but this is Australian taxpayers' money and we're going to have to pay it back. Uh, but we've, we've laid the foundation stones. We haven't flitted it away like the GFC on pink bats and school horse. We've actually invested in money, whether it be JobKeeper or infrastructure, that will create jobs not just in the building of it, but also in the operational, building productivity and profitability back into the economy. On the cultural issues and the problems for the government, does the Prime Minister have to cut Andrew Lamming loose? Well, I think the Prime Minister has been very clear that, that his behaviour is not acceptable, and it's not. Uh, let's be clear about that. And he's been given time to go and reflect on his actions and his future. And I think that's important that he takes that time to seriously consider that. The He's protected, isn't he? Because it's uh, if he goes, it's minority government. Oh, well... That's I, the reality, isn't it? With respect, I, I don't think that's the case. This is about making sure we do the right thing. Um, this is about... This whole thing comes back to one word, Kieran. It comes back to respect. Respecting one another and respecting their boundaries. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this hasn't happened. Uh, and we've got to put our hand up and say we have to fix this. It's important we, we show we fix this, uh, and those that have done the wrong thing obviously have to reflect on their actions and their future. It, it seems the Nats think they need a bit of behavioural training as well from what we heard at the National Conference. Why is that? Well, what was, what was uh, decided at the National Conference was around making sure that the leadership and the executive had coaching around how dealing with these complaints. Um, some of these, some of the people that, that go into executive positions in the National Party are, are volunteers uh, and don't necessarily have the corporate experience uh, nor the professional training uh, to understand how to deal with these complaints in a professional way, in a satisfactory way. So we all can learn from how we can do this better. Uh, so what we've said is, if we get these complaints, we'd like to have a process uh, that is world's best. And that's what the National Party is saying. We need to get back to that simple word of respect. The PM's speech to staff it was leaked to James Masola in the paper today. Doesn't, it, doesn't that in and of itself show you how morale has plummeted? You're copying leaks from staff on the PM. Well, oh, there's a lot of hurt. I mean, um, my staff are hurt. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of good people in this building that really feel aggrieved by the actions of a few. We can't walk past those actions of a few. Uh, but you can't live and work in an environment like this and not be disappointed. That These are men and women that are professionally and emotionally putting everything into their jobs to make Australia a better place, uh, and they feel let down. And we get that, and for that, we're sorry. Uh, we're, but we've got to fix it. Uh, and that's the commitment we've got to give now, is just get on with the job and fix it and show not only to the staff, but to the, the, the entire Australian public that we are going to fix this and we will get it right. We'll start in Parliament House. And then we'll, we'll work right across this nation. And if we work together, uh, then we can. We can make significant change. David Little, proud Minister for Drought, Agriculture and Emergency Management. I know you've had a busy weekend with the Nationals, so very much appreciate you coming in early Sunday. Thanks for having me, mate.